Last year, I made this video on Systemd255 and the introduction of an error screen on Crash, akin to a Windows B-Sod or Blue Screen of Death. As such, I gave it this frankly banger thumbnail. Now, the intention was to provide easy access to your Systemd log messages, and there were even discussions about including a QR code, among various other things, which, personally, I am a big fan of. I am a fan of making this information much more easily accessible. But this was intended for a specific purpose. It was intended for boot failures or other user space faults. What it didn't handle is going further down, going down to the kernel panic level. Because if you're having a kernel panic, you're gonna have some problems doing things in user space. Now with kernel 6.10, some features are going into place for a, I don't want to call it new system because it's a system that's been a work in progress for a very, very long time now, a system called DRM Panic. Here is the patch set itself. Add a DRM Panic handler. This introduces a new DRM Panic handler, which displays a message when a panic occurs, so when FBCon is disabled, you can still see a kernel panic. It works with simple DRM, MGAG200, AST, and IMX. Now, Linux kernel panic messages have been in a really weird state for a really long time, and are actually nowhere near as useful as a lot of people seem to think they are. In many cases, you won't see a kernel panic message, your system will just die. There is a couple of reasons why it's in this state. One of them is for about 10 years now, there has been a big push to kill off a system called Config VT. This is your kernel level virtual terminal. And you might be wondering, when are you going to use a kernel level virtual terminal? Well, have you ever pressed Control, Alt, and then F2, F3, F4, so on and so forth? Traditionally, that was config vt. Whether you were doing this because you have a broken desktop and need to go and close the application, or you just want a full screen text environment, that was config vt. What if your system is very, very balked and you don't have an install media to go and fix it? Well, what you can also do is change your init over from something like systemd to bin slash bash, and then load directly into a bash shell. This was using config vt. Do you know it also used config vt? Kernel panic messages. That does not mean they were trying to kill off any of these systems. Over the years, workarounds have been developed and things are slowly going to place. But right now, it's still very much at the let's work something out. Let's see what we're going to do. Let's test things and see what we want to do into the future. So over the years, for the past three years, there has been a user called Nodopolis who's been going over what removing config VT is like back in 2021, 2022, and then 2023, basically documenting the current state of the system. Config VT has been in the kernel since basically the beginning, but over the years hasn't really been maintained and has basically just been allowed to rot. One of the big things is CV2020 14.390. This is when a lot of people realize just how broken it was. This CVE removed scrollback. So here is what Linus had to say. Note that for me to be willing to take the scrollback code back, it really would have to be more than just a revert in a trivial fix. It would have to be more along the lines of this is simplified and verified. For example, at a minimum, all the VT resize etc stuff would have to clearly and obviously reset the soft scroll back so that we simply can't have those kinds of issues. If you look at that commit that removes the code, most of that code really doesn't make sense. I dare anybody looking at the removed fbcon redraw softback function or the different cases in fbcon scroll delta for that matter to claim they understand what it is doing. It's very odd code, and it handles a lot of odd special cases. So the reason the code got removed was it was just very grotty and hasn't really been maintained for over a decade. In order to resurrect it, we'd not just have to have a maintainer, the whole it's grotty and incomprehensible and has these nasty interactions with random other things would need to be addressed too. A lot of people think of the kernel as this really well-maintained project, and in many ways, it is. 
but there are some parts of the kernel which nobody understands and nobody wants to touch, and this is one of them. Nobody has any interest in fixing it, nobody knows how it works, and nobody wants to learn how it works. That's just one of the VT problems. VTs are also not multi-seat aware. This doesn't just mean that the VT consoles only work on seat 0, the primary default seat, but on machines that are capable and configured to have multiple seats, if seat 0 has an active VT with no running display server, as in it's in text mode, the VT console will receive keyboard input from all the keyboards, even if they're configured in UDEV to be associated with a different seat that is not seat 0. Basically, any keystroke on the other seats will be picked up by the VT console, where sensitive keystrokes from other users could be made visible, such as passwords. Also, VTs have limited character support. The kernel mode VTs only support a very limited number of glyphs. The documentation states it's only 256 characters normally, or if text color depth is reduced on the console, the limit is increased, but only to 512 characters. International keyboards are also more limited in the VT console. Basically, if you're not using the Latin character set, good luck. Also, even though they're a kernel level function, VTs still rely on user space Gettys, user space terminals, and user space utilities for VTs to be interactive. So things like bash, things like ls, and all of this stuff is not part of the kernel. So even though it's running in kernel space, it basically doesn't work with our user space, so it's no different from a user space terminal. Now here's the thing about kernel panics. While config VT is used to display a kernel panic, and you have probably seen at least a couple of kernel panics here and there, it'll look something like this. Most of the time, you're not actually going to see anything. Most of the time, if you see something, it's an early boot message, or the system is completely balked before it even gets into the init system. Now, I would not recommend doing this. Do not run this on a production machine, but you can force a kernel panic with the command on screen, and it'll be in the description down below. If you're one of those people that think that kernel panic messages just work most of the time and you'll always see what's going wrong in the kernel, you are going to be very surprised by what you see. Nothing. Well, not nothing. You're going to see your desktop hang and you won't see a kernel panic message. Maybe you'll see a black screen but you're almost certainly not going to see the kernel panic message. And this is the perfect condition for the message to appear. This is a function for the sole purpose of testing out a kernel panic. Even in this situation, it's very likely not going to work. What do you think is going to happen if something really bad happens? You're likely not going to see a kernel panic message. And there's a simple reason for this. You're running a display server, and the kernel can't swap from the display server over to the VT. And this is not just the case in the display server. If you're in a VT and making use of a DRM driver, that being a direct rendering manager driver, basically a GPU driver, in most cases, the VT is just going to hang. The one case where kernel panic messages generally work consistently is if you pass into the kernel no mode set. This is basically telling the kernel, don't load any complex GPU drivers, do the most basic rendering possible. Telling the kernel to basically just output in BIOS mode, which is not a productive way to use your system in 99% of cases. Obviously, in most cases, the Linux kernel is stable, and we're not just seeing crashes left and right. This isn't like the early days of Windows where dumb things like ejecting a DVD while the DVD is being read would be sod. Or that famous Windows demo where printers were being tested and the printer driver caused Windows to be sod. We're not seeing things like that. But we all know that Linux, from time to time, is going to crash. Maybe it's a third-party driver, maybe it's something else, but you're still going to see a crash. And like many people out there, I had been under the assumption that kernel panics just 
worked most of the time. That's what I've been told. That's what people keep saying. That's what, you know, is just the logical thing to assume. So many people have told me we don't need a better system to handle kernel error messages because we have kernel panic messages. We don't need a BSOD-like system. But <laughs> kernel panic messages are not appearing most of the time. We need a system to better handle these messages. And that's why systems like DRM Panic are being worked on and haven't just been worked on recently. Like, this is not a new thing that is being developed. So here is a Pharonix article talking about DRM Panic handling back in 2016. Here is another one from 2011. <laughs> this has been a work in progress for over a decade now, my uh, personal favorite is this one from 2019, where it was described as a Linux oops viewer. <laughs> I hope that is the, uh, the technical term for something going wrong. And I don't know why the kernel panic message problem had just never clicked with me. I have had kernel panics on the system, or at least things that seem like in retrospect, they probably were a kernel panic. My entire desktop locks up. I can't switch TTYs. I cannot do anything whatsoever. The system is just completely hanged. The only thing I can do is just reboot the system. I thought maybe there was like a desktop crash or something else weird going on. But it's very likely that that was just a kernel panic. And I couldn't see a kernel panic message. So I didn't know that's what was going on. I, for one, am very much in favor of making sure that kernel panic messages properly display most of the time. Now, obviously, if something goes really, really badly, there are going to be cases where even a kernel panic message, if it's working properly, cannot be displayed. It is the kernel that is displaying the kernel panic message, so if the kernel is having a panic, there are situations where the message is just not going to appear. But... In most cases, that's not what should be happening. In most cases where other parts of the kernel are breaking, a message should be able to be displayed. And slowly after a whole decade of working on this, we are making our way to a point where that's actually going to be a case. We can actually move away from config VT and hopefully get to a point where if the kernel actually panics, you as the user are actually going to see it. But let me know your thoughts down below. Were you aware of the state the kernel panic messages were in? Did you think they always just worked and didn't realize there was anything wrong with them? Were you aware that the display servers completely broke them? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, scrubs, leave your pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Don't panic, it's just a kernel.